all right uh, i need 1% to volunteer for scribe and if you are a member of existing working groups or projects and have an update make sure to add it in front of you all right uh, let me do a quick check if our speaker for today is present oh there you go pen uh, perfect uh, so for folks who joined a bit late i'm going to share the meeting notes link one more time okay here's a link please add yourself and uh, let's go to the usual group updates first and then ben we can get started with your presentation after so any new members today that who, who want to introduce themselves all right any issues uh, that need attention from the leads or the co-chairs or other members all right and uh, i think we definitely have few project updates i can imagine so um let me see who else is here uh maybe justin you can start with security pulse update and then marina on anything on supply chain security sure um this has been a very active time i want to single out uh eddie knight and raga especially for spending a lot of time going through the security pulse assessments that have been done um to fill people in really quick. Uh, we have an assessment process for tag security. This is a separate process than audits and other things like this and tends to find different types of problems and issues. And um, we've been using this for, you know, doing this for a few years, but uh, many projects did not have uh, an assessment completed. And for them to do a self-assessment is sort of the first part of the process. So uh, through the Security Pals effort, the goal is to try to make it easier by having someone else step in and do most of the work needed to do the self-assessment for a project. The project can just look over it. And then um, you know, we can therefore get more projects ready to do joint assessments. And what we have found uh, throughout this or sorry, so I had a student of a hundred and something or a class of a hundred and something students this semester and I had them um, act as security pals working in groups. We did this for 27 projects that didn't have a security assessment and that process is starting to come to a close now. Um, the In some cases, as you might expect, we got lots of good feedback from the project maintainers. In some cases, as you would expect, we heard nothing from the project maintainers. In some cases, as you would expect, we heard complaints from the project maintainers. Why are you doing this? We had an audit already um, and so on. But in general, uh, things have gone decently smoothly. Um, and Eddie and uh, Raga especially really helped to move the process along. Um, I suggested and it was accepted that I step away from the final approval of merging these in because I've been so involved with everything to this point. And um, so we're at a state now where they're looking at that and figuring out what tweaks need to be made and um, getting the projects to, to complete it. Um, on a separate but related note, the uh, someone from the flat car team reached out to me and said, hey, we actually really want to merge this thing that you've been bugging us about merging, you know, our joint assessment that's actually completed. What do I need to do it? And I just said, basically, you just need to check it, you know, send us a PR and say it's ready. And they said, okay, we'll do it. And as far as I know, it hasn't happened yet, but I might have missed it in the flurry of a million other PRs related to security pals. All right. Great updates. Uh, I'm also... Uh, been uh, uh, seeing a lot of PRs uh, from Security Pulse. I'm very happy about it. It's a good problem to have. Uh, so much great work happening. Uh, so thankful for you, Justin, and everyone else that you called out and who's been working on this. 
uh and yeah it's it's in it's the maintainer response is probably very expected and falls in the three buckets that you mentioned so yeah not surprised at all like you said uh so yeah very happy and uh, i'll take a look at the flat car pr if they have it but uh, yeah we can merge it uh, once it's reviewed and it's there all right cool uh uh, Marina on supply chain or anybody else from that working group? Yeah, I missed the meeting last week. If someone else wants to take it, otherwise I can just give an update on what I know. Um, John, if you want to take it, otherwise I can just go. Yeah, um, mostly just making progress on the um, the policy uh, blog. We, uh, we had a little bit of conversation this last week about... Um, the, the scope, again, as these things typically go, we, we keep talking about more and more ideas and we keep wanting to write more and more content. Um, we're thinking more of a shorter term, just the, the practical getting started guide and maybe a, a second follow on um, in the future about some of the more um, hypothetical or, or cutting edge type um, policy ideas that, that folks are starting to um, play around with. So um, yeah, but we're can continuing on and, and making good progress. All right, that is great. So if I have to summarize for notes, uh, work in progress for the policy on supply chain security issue, correct? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, no other updates from Zero Trust on my side. Any other projects have any other updates? And if not, we can pass we it on to. Um, we are doing yeah, the, the Kubernetes security slam is on Friday. Um, oh so yeah, December 15, right? Yes. Yeah, so it was supposed to be last Saturday. A lot of pushback from the Kubernetes maintainers about doing a Saturday. So we pushed it to this Friday. Um, and if anybody from Tag Security wants to participate, Registration's closed, but I can I can add you in if you just want to send me a message. Uh, we are finalizing the groupings, so uh, any new contributors or yeah anybody that is participating, we're trying to separate them with the Kubernetes maintainers to have a maintainer or an existing contributor of some kind partnered with new contributors, and then everybody's going to be working on uh, making security hygiene improvements to the Kubernetes sub projects. And so, uh, so looking forward to it. It should be pretty fun. It's on Friday. If anybody wants to participate still, you can just send me a message. Right. Okay. Perfect. I'm excited to see how that goes. And, uh, we also have a Thursday Kubernetes six security meeting tomorrow at nine. Uh, so if you can join and share that, I think more people will know about it. And if you're in there, I'll try to pass on the message. Yeah, thank you. All right, cool. Um, if no other updates, I'll make Ben the co-host so he can present and then could I, we can get started. Oh, could I add go ahead. Input there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry yeah. if I missed anyone. No, sorry, I was, I was a little late, but... Um... Yeah, for the uh, cloud native security controls work, uh, we've got some progress lately, uh, but I was hoping to get some peer review of uh, work that I've done. So that conversation is going on in the controls channel, and I can also link um, the PRs and, and things like that. So I can merge it without, but I definitely would prefer some uh, peer review of my work. Yeah, why don't you add the links in the Zoom chat and the meeting notes, and then... Uh... Also, we can share it on the tax security channel so everyone else can take a look later. All right, cool, perfect. Uh, thank you, John. And uh, let me go back to, oh, uh, by the way, uh, Anka, I made a comment on the tax compliance uh, project issue. I don't know if you saw it, but if you have questions, just ping me on Slack and we can figure it out. Um, okay, the one about uh, changing the template? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did already. You, you can close the old one. And, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, half an hour ago, we also got the new org. We moved all the projects there. So oh. uh, tomorrow or next week, we'll uh, ask for the sandbox. 
Okay, and perfect. Then next year, starting the calls. So, it, yay, the, nice. We proceed with the, yeah. Okay, um, perfect. Maybe so I'll I'm submit gonna... uh, in that uh, um, issue. Um, mm -hmm. I will ask, uh, you know, Vikas, who is taking care of the process, to uh, copy and paste the content of the issue for the sandbox. So to get your feedback and uh, and before submitting to make sure that you, you know, uh, you you share your wisdom <laughs> with the with the prior processes when you when you've done the same thing. Thank you. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. I'll also add in the template uh, this project going forward for from next year, where when we ask for project updates, you get a chance to share what's been going on, so that we we don't miss any updates going forward on this particular topic. Does that sound good to you? Thank you. Yeah, and I hope I I, I think we'll have a lot of questions on the uh, compliance tag uh, organizational side until we stand on our feet. So we are on the crawling phase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, happy to help. Uh, cool. So Ben, uh, I just made you co-host. So you should be able to share your screen. I will okay. go on mute and do my best to take notes. But if anyone wants to take notes with me in the notes document, feel free. Uh, and with that, yeah, take it away. I'll give a quick intro about yourself and the topic and we can go from there. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. I'm happy to be back here uh, at the tech security meeting. I'm. I feel really bad because, like I think, in the last year I didn't have many time to to join, uh, but I'm happy to see all the faces and uh, see all the icons, uh, where I don't see the faces. Um, um, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm uh, one of um, one of the maintainers of the Cubescape project. Um, I don't know if I, I'm going to give you a small intro about the Cubescape project. I think that last time we came to tech security and presented the project was a year and a few months ago. So I think it's also a good thing to like do a little small catch up here. But this is not the reason why I came today. And I think that it's sometimes it's better to come with some uh, something uh, meaningful with what we uh, th think which we are doing and then, you know, just giving a, a, a very dry update of where the project is. So I'm I'm came to you today to talk about uh, um, a new feature we added late to, to Cubescape um, um, about which touches into the uh, uh, problem, uh, problem of vulnerability management um, through BEX documents. Um, I'm going to also talk a little bit, maybe I don't, this is maybe not really the right place to do a small intro to VEX because most of the people know, heard about it already. But I'm going to like trying to give a small intro for those who don't. Uh, I'm going to show you what we did. And um, and at the end, we are, we'll discuss why I decided to come to here and, and present do this presentation. I hope this is not going to be a long presentation. We'll have time to, to discuss. Um, but until then, while, uh, while I'm talking about the goals, why I'm presenting here, uh, I'll, you know, just take it as, uh, as something uh, interesting, uh, an interesting technology we start to work on. So uh, what is Cubescape? So those who, are, uh, who, uh, who don't know, Cubescape project started uh, by the company called Armo, uh, which I'm part of. Uh, Cubescape started as an open source security scanner for Kubernetes. Uh, both for uh, uh, for configuration uh, side of Kubernetes, YAML files, uh, 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 and Helm charts, uh, finding uh, 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 misconfigurations and and compliance issues uh, there uh, throughout the whole you know delivery pipeline, uh, and not just configuration problems but also uh, uh, also vulnerabilities. Uh, we've been integrated into many uh, uh, many tools. Um, I think that we start, we were accepted to sandbox something around a year ago. Uh, we are, you know, the project is eyeing to, uh, uh, to go into incubation somewhat around 2023. I hope by the end of, we'll have, if we'll have enough time from the TOC, um, uh, we, we see a wide adoption, uh, in, in multiple big companies, um, and, uh, and in general, the project started to uh, lately to like add new features and add new uh, um, 
parts to uh, to its uh, arsenal. And one of them is uh, what we call reachability. So we, as a project, you know, we've getting our information from a Kubernetes cluster from the API server. Uh, we have a host scanner, which scans the uh, Kubernetes nodes uh, for, uh, for different configurations and setups. Uh, and we are trying to find different uh, security issues uh, around there. We are scanning uh, the container images which are running inside the Kubernetes cluster and getting information. And these were up until now; these were our our more uh, our uh, main data streams through which we work. And we understood that in order to make it much more this whole process, the, the outputs make them much more interesting, and most of the time filter out uh, 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 filter out the noise of false positives or uh, not just filtering out, but sometimes enhance the uh, the um, the fixed proposals which we are giving to the users, uh, we need to have a more deeper uh, visibility on what's happening inside the workloads inside the cluster. And we joined forces with another uh, CNCF project uh, called Inspector Gadget. Uh, uh, they are uh, experts in retrieving information through eBPF from, uh, from workloads during the runtime, and we started to use this information. One of the first things uh, we started to do around March, April was a feature we called reachability, or at the beginning we, uh, we, uh, uh, we called it um, um, relevancy. Um, the, this feature was enabled us, we started to use EPPF in order to understand that during a runtime of a workload, what kind of what are the files the workload touches during the runtime inside the container, and this enabled us to create a list of, of what we call a filtered S bomb, and as we are we using Gripe. Gripe is in, uh, integrated into uh, uh, Cubescape, and we are using Gripe to create an S bomb for a container image, and we used the runtime information from Inspector Gadget. Uh, in order to understand which are the software packages which are actually used during the runtime of, of, of the workload. And this enabled us to translate the original SBOM to a subset, which we called filtered SBOM, which, are, uh, which only contains those software packages, which we saw that the, uh, that the pod touched during its, it, uh, during its runtime. Now, the interesting thing is that, that you know, not just that we are getting an SBOM, which is really much more meaningful, but beyond that, when we are translating the SBOM into a list of vulnerabilities, we are getting a much shorter list. And, you know, just again, I'm just reiterating regarding the project. This is what we, the, this is the direction we started to take in, in 2023 to tap into BPF, understanding much better what's happening inside the workloads in the cluster in order to create much more interesting features and outputs. So just bringing you a, a very short example, and maybe you know uh, you might ask, okay, how, when this uh, uh, sample was taken, but, but in, uh, again, in order just to make you understand what we're talking about, um, when we are scanning a, a, a Redis image, uh, and I don't remember which version was it. I'm sorry that this is not very precise, but again, this is just only for you to show, understand the relations here. Um, we are getting over 150 uh, uh, vulnerabilities among them, the different kinds of severity. But if we are only uh, uh, re uh, regarding only the reachable uh, vulnerabilities, which been loaded into the memory or which the container touched during the runtime, we are getting around 10 uh, uh, vulnerabilities or 20 to 20 vulnerabilities, which are actually were used. And this means that we can uh, 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 we can filter out a lot of what we call false positives. These are false positives because um, on one hand, um, it's true that the software packages which are included into in, in the container image, they are they have uh, the, those specific vulnerabilities. Uh, uh, registered in uh, the NVD uh, uh, database. But on the other hand, they are not loaded into memory, not used in runtime. So the priority of the uh, of fixing them are much lower. 
Therefore, the, uh, you know, a user can deprioritize the, uh, the, uh, them as, and, and he doesn't need to do uh, uh, fixes as fast as he would need to do if he wouldn't know which of those, those vulnerabilities are reachable or which are not. And this brings me to Vex, because uh, when we started the project, I, you know, I'm, I think, I don't remember when, when was the first time I started to, you know, uh, heard about Vex, but but for the sake, but you know, for the sake of the understanding, when uh, we developed the reachability feature, we started to use the, simply the same formats as as Gripe does. We just created, uh, you know, you had a, a, a normal vulnerability list, which was the original output, and then we created a filtered output, which was just the same, you know, document format, just shorter one, and it was the Gripe output. But um, I had a discussion uh, with Adolfo um, in the last uh, two, three months. Uh, we met uh, at um, uh, the OpenSSF uh, 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 day in, uh, I think, in September. We started to discuss this problematic, and, and we came up with the idea of Cubescape could produce VEX. Now, just for you who don't know, Vex is uh, uh, stands for a vulnerability exchange document, uh, if I remember correctly, but but its meaning is that the it's a way a formal way to communicate uh, uh, the status of different vulnerabilities delivered inside a software product. It enables. It is something I I usually when people are I explain this to people, uh, maybe I, I hope I'm not very wrong with it, but usually I'm, I'm uh, explaining it as a as a natural evolution to, to S-BOMBs, when in S-BOMBs you were declaring what kind of sub-software components you were including in your deliveries, and in VEX you are, you are even going further and you're explaining the vulnerabilities and their statuses in, inside your deliveries, uh, which are which is obviously something that is very, very needed. And, the, and in the VEX document you can communicate whether a specific vulnerability is uh, um, exploitable or not, uh, and therefore it's it's very very in my point of view I think it's a very very good initiative. But the main from my point of view when I talk to people, my main concern about Vex was not actually the how I'm going to use this document because obviously if I have this document it's a very very uh, um, you know straightforward understanding, okay, how I can use, how it can go into a, a, an application layer, uh, this information, and people can use it for different uh, um, in different ways. And I think it's a very, very good thing. But what we, the part which wasn't very clear for me is how people are going to uh, uh, provide VEX. And in, in the earliest discussions, I, uh, I heard that most of the people um, we're saying that the idea was that that the software vendors will need to provide this information, and uh, um, and I you know among us I hope there are not a lot of people are hearing it, but I I have to tell you that I'm a very lazy person, I I hate maintaining um, documents and this kind of documents, and I I I usually love to automate everything, um, and I think that most of us are love to automate things it's, because it's much more fun to uh, to write code uh, than doing the same thing uh, all the time. And I thought that that it will be very, very hard for vendors and especially uh, uh, open source projects to uh, to maintain such a list rely in, in a reliable way. It will create a burden on uh, on on our uh, ourselves on our ma uh, maintainers of open source projects. Because every time a new vulnerability will come up, okay, we'll need to update this document manually, and we'll have to check whether this is, you know, declare the status of 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 these vulnerabilities. Therefore, my eyes from the beginning were really even before we started to work on reachability, were eyeing uh, to the way that to generate VEX documents to try to automate them as much as we can and as in an as reliable way as we can. And therefore, um, you know, we together with Adolfo, uh, we opened this issue of generation of document uh, uh, by Cubescape relevancy engine. So the same reachability or relevancy engine we I'm talking to you about, um, adding the capability 
to Cubescape to automatically generate uh, uh, VEX documents and VEX statements inside the, the, the documents based on the same uh, same principles I've talked to you about uh, uh, before, that if we see that a, a, a software package is not touched during the runtime uh, of a workload, um, then we'll declare it as something that's not reachable, or in the case uh, of uh, VEX, we'd say that something is not affected because it's not something that's being used, actually used by the software, uh, software image uh, during the runtime. So um, uh, then one quick question uh, in the issue, yeah. you, you mentioned something called cube one. What is that? So it's, it's just a subcomponent inside, inside the, uh, inside the Cubescape uh, installation. It's, it's, it's just a vulnerability engine inside the Cubescape operator. Cool. Um, by the way, guys, stop me anytime if you have questions. Okay, we are among us, so um, it's not. A, I, I always like more questions than than just giving a, a straight up presentation. So feel free. I should have started with that. So um, so in uh, uh at the end uh, I think something around a week week or two before KubeCon, uh, we released the uh the Cubescape operator in the in cluster uh, the cluster in installation. Uh, together with this capability, which is right now it's it's under a flag in the Helm installation, so you have to uh, um, enable it because it's it's a very early feature, uh, and we don't want for everyone uh, to to start to, to emit outputs. But in general, the idea is that every time that there is a new uh, image, we, we see a new image inside the cluster, and Cubescape operator scans every image uh, that gets into the uh, this cluster and and uh, creates uh, um, a CRD uh, like object um, inside the cluster with which contains the S bomb um, and also creates a, a CRD object which is the uh, which contains actually the vulnerability manifest and uh, uh, and now we've added uh, another output that you will get the actually the vex document uh, inside the cluster as a CRD so you can like just get with kubectl you can get uh, 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 the VEX document we are generating during the runtime uh, of the uh, of the workload. Um, so I really hope that um, I will try to make you a, a quick demo, and let's hope that um, that all the gods of the demos are live demos are are with us today. If not, then you will need to believe me that it works. Um, so what I did, I've just installed uh, um, the Cubescape operator uh, on the cluster. Um, just doing a quick check um, that everything is running. Okay, it is actually downloading uh, uh, the vulnerability information, but it is okay. So I'm just uh -huh. sorry. So I'm just taking the next example uh, deployment um, and just from uh, from the Kubernetes uh, um, uh, documentation site. So what is going to happen is that uh, let's see that it's work. So um, when the container uh, is created and starts to run, um, what what is we are doing is we start tapping to uh, ebpf and start to monitor all the file opens and all the exec commands uh, the container uh, does and writing them for ourselves so when the s bomb becomes available which is happening you know in parallel uh, when it becomes available we'll start to generate the filtered s bomb now again um since and i Guess that you are already asking yourself, okay, that how much for how long you you need to see a container running up until you can say that it's safe to say that you understand which software packages were loaded. Um, it's a complicated question with a complicated answer, but for right now, a short my short answer is that for the sake of this demo, we are only taking uh, uh, two minutes. We are looking at the activity file activity for two minutes, and when it is uh, uh, when it is ready. Uh, when two minutes are have passed, 
um, then we'll generate uh, both the filter desk bomb, the, the filtered vulnerability output, and also the um, the VAX document. So we need to wait for half half more minute. And I'm sorry that I might I should, make, should have already recreated these objects ahead of time. So you don't we don't need to wait for them. Um, if you have any questions right now, it's a good time. If not, then we'll wait. So by we should have um we should have um already here the VEX documents. So I'm doing a cube cut, cut here. Um, let's see in, for some reason, yeah, it's here. You can see that we've created for the Nginx uh, um, open vulnerability uh, exchange container, which is actually the document. So let's do, um, get on it, oh yeah. More. So, um, Again, those of you who are, you know how VEX documents work, work in, in, a, in a VEX document, uh, you, you have statements. Um, and for every statement, you are stating to which product it belongs to and what to what CV it applies to and what is the st actual the statement is. So for example, in this case, uh, you can see a product, which is the, this actually this uh, Nginx image. Uh, you can see the, uh, the subcomponent, which is this Debian, uh, package which was inside installed inside the, uh, the image and you can see that it has, has this CV uh, 2022-34903 um, uh, with its own description and you can see the impact statement it, uh, that vulnerable uh, component is not loaded into memory vulnerable code not present which is the justification and the status which is the main part it is, we, we can state that it's not affected so um, if I'm, uh, we'll grab here, um, let's try it like this. How many affected? We have a few affected. We have 58 uh, affected uh, uh, state uh, vulnerabilities and we have, we have 338 not affected, uh, which you can see that, we, we can show a huge uh, uh, reduction in the noise already um, uh, that we can show already explain to you that you have a bunch of vulnerabilities which are which are not affected. Now I'm let me try to output this uh, into a JSON document. Um, Sick of the demo. I've copied a few things out that ahead of the time. So I have this nginx JSON, which is actually the same VEX document in JSON format. And now I'm going to use um, gripe. And let's hope for this mic that uh, with this VEX document and gripe will rescan uh, in the CLI the same image. We should have this uh, more or less the same number of, of vulnerabilities, but now it will take the VEX document also into account, and it will it should uh, um, it should uh, disregard or ignore those vulnerabilities which are which are not affected. So actually, we can you know tap into your existing gripe or trivi uh, 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 scanners and use this VEX document you know as they would use any other VEX uh, manually produced VEX documents. Um, in the environment, and as I see it, it looks like for some reason, I think I haven't configured, uh, yeah. So for, um, I don't remember how I'm gonna do it, but you, uh, I haven't configured my gripe to take into, uh, to, to ignore uh, these because you have to write it of uh, uh, ignore rule, uh, and I forgot to do it before the demo but you have to uh, you should believe me that 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 this is the case that you in the, uh, if i would have done it uh you know you would seen all these uh 338 uh, uh vulnerabilities would have uh, uh been ignored uh by gripe 
is something that uh, that work and and Adolfo wrote the Bex extension to to Gripe already integrated this. So um, getting back to the presentation. Um, so the reason uh, why I came to the, to here today, um, one is that I think that um, I was really thinking of of going into the direction with this idea of going into CNCF projects and um, in order to start to automatize uh, the creation of, of VEX document and, and their maintenance, I was thinking to create a way for um, for uh, adding it to uh, the release processes of, of, uh, of our uh, projects. And so they will have a automatically generated VEX document, which might be you know reviewed manually, uh, which I'm pretty sure that will be done by a few people. But um, but I would like to really think together. I would really love to get your feedback of whether you think that this could be like something that if we do a proper uh, automation around uh, around this process in uh, GitHub Actions, whether this could be like something that uh, you know we could tell CNCF projects to start to use in order to produce VEX documents. And the second reason, is, the second question is actually really pretty connecting to this. I, I think that this is a way to, I'm looking for, you know, inputs on how to boost VEX adoption. And I think that one of the ways to, to start to boost VEX adoption is to, um, is to push the use and, 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 and output of VEX and uh, produce VEX documents, because actually people will start to adopt VEX when they will have VEX. If they won't have VEX documents, it, it's very nice to have scanners who are taking VEX uh, documents into account, but alone they they are not very useful they need the, uh, these statements as well and you know i'm also looking for like early adopters and and you know other uh, contributors and uh, who can you know give feedback and look into this feature and you know uh, um, give us more input for uh, us as project maintainers and also for vex people on the same thing so now I would like op to open the discussion. I would uh, love to get some feedback um, and you know answers to these questions. Thank you, Ben. For anyone who has questions or comments or suggestions, just uh, raise your hand since we have 15 plus people uh, and then we can go based on that. Justin, first. Yeah, so sorry, I'm a little loopy. I've been taking some cold medicine and stuff, but I have what might be an obvious question here. So um, when you create these VEX documents, how do you really know the ground truth and how do you stop this from being, you know, kind of polluted with a lot of low quality or divergent um, disclosures of vulnerabilities? So, it's a good question, and and you know, um, to tell the truth, this question you know can be asked to any any VEX document. Like, um, and it, you know, in general, it's a question of whether you will believe if someone produces a VEX document either with Cubescape or or alone or or with some other tools. How will you believe that that this is actually you know true? Um, and I, I'm not sure that I, I have like a definite answer to this unless you know you are some uh, someone who are who are believing for you have the you know the the belief that that the project is actually can be taken into serious and they they are trying to maintain their Rex documents or creating them in a proper way. Now, my I think that I'm not sure that I'm I'm not claiming that I'm hundred percent you know true in this, but I can say that if this is something that was created by an algorithm, this is actually eliminates the menu of the human uh, error. It obviously introduced technological errors, um, which is true for our whole industry, right? Uh, but as far as if we are creating VEX documents based on actual runtime analysis of our uh, of our uh, projects or our applications of the software we are we are producing I think that it's 
it 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 has an appeal. It has an appeal that it it first of all you don't have to be concerned that someone forgot to update something or someone added something that is not true. You will always be able. You will always have a transparent and output based on you know the the computer calculations uh, that were done. And you know this is for for from this point of view, I think that there it has an appeal, a serious appeal, at least for me, the way I think. I'm not sure right. I, I was able to answer, but I hope that I was able to, you know, add something to that. Yeah. So I'll make a quick comment and then we'll go to Shlomo. Uh, I I agree, Ben, and also yeah. Justin's point is valid. Maybe there is a place where uh, peer-reviewed VEX document would be more trustworthy, where the Cubescape reachability generates a VEX document then the maintainers get a chance to review it. And if any glaring mistakes show up, they get a chance to correct it. And then the scanners can consume it. So it could be a possible way to do it. And uh, with that, I'll go to Shlomo. Thank you. Okay, so I'm wondering about the fact that it seems like you're, uh, like it's doing some sort of dynamic analysis on a, during runtime. Um, do you need to run application through its paces to actually get to all possible uh, states of the application before you can figure out what's going to be loaded into memory. Yeah, so it's it, it's um again this is a great question and um um obviously the things that we haven't seen during the analysis time, uh, the software co packages we weren't using the in the analysis time will be marked as uh not affected or, or 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 as unreachable for the attacker and it obviously it may it does back to how much you believe in your test then just giving you my the the ideal situation which i believe in is that we'll have enough test coverage in our project that i would say 90 plus percent of, of the code paths are covered and if it's true and we are uh, we can you know during the test time we can uh, observe the application behavior means that we'll have a pretty darn pretty good uh, uh, um, picture of of what are the uh, affected and not affected vulnerabilities obviously so there is a big caveat here because if if during the observability time we don't see that and the, the tests are not covering it and for some reason we haven't seen it's a problem, but just for just a, a small, like here, I, I would add a small comment that there are commercial tools out there who are actually observing to your applications at the uh, very, uh, at the highest resolution they can at the code execution level, which functions were called, which ifs, uh, 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 which conditions were taken, which loops were done, um, and these commercial products, if they have enough information, they can give a much uh, uh, a higher resolution output uh, as opposed to the reachability in Cubescape. But on the other hand, I think that today, since we are our resolution is relatively low, we are working talking here about the resolution of software packages, not functions. Give, for example, if there is a vulnerability in in, uh, uh, in lib curl. Um, which vulnerability can be exploited if someone uses, I don't know, uh, TFTP with uh, with libcurl. Um, and we see during the runtime that libcurl is loaded into the memory. And and we don't know if it's being used for TFTP or for HTTP. And, you know, as we all know, 99% of the people are using libcurl for, for HTTP. Uh, we'll mark anyhow that, that component as uh, as uh, affected because it was loaded into memory. This means that we still have uh, uh, false positives, but I I assume that we have we should we have a lower level uh, ratio of small uh, of false negatives because actually at the higher we are working at the higher resolution, and therefore I'm saying that what we are doing is is not the I would say the the ideal solution, uh, but it's the most practical solution. 
had it. So the idea here would be for other CNCF projects would be essentially add in their CI and their GitHub Actions when they're running the tests, add in, um, add Kubescape in, and then have them output that as an artifact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more comment on this is, I think along with the testing that you mentioned, where ideally 90% are covered, uh, I've seen people use uh, security chaos engineering methods where they will run the application through different uh, possible scenarios. And that sometimes loads things that are not loaded in a regular uh, standard normal behavior of an application. So that will also increase the coverage. Uh, but yeah, uh, all the all the points are valid. Like depending on the resolution, we could have more false positive and false negative. Any more questions? Okay, if, if we don't have questions, okay, I'm, I'm thank you for your time, guys. Really, I appreciate it. Again, any kind of feedback. Um, uh, you tried it not working. You tried it works and it surprises you, <laughs> or any kind of input. You know, I will be happy. Also, Adolfo will be really happy. A uh, uh, big shout out uh, to him also, he is not here, but uh, uh, shout out to him about his work on OpenVax. Um, and, you know, um, hope to meet you soon, guys. Thank you, Ben, so much. A uh, couple of uh, questions uh, as next steps. Uh, I personally really love the presentation and the demo. Uh, this has been a long standing problem uh, for the whole cloud native ecosystem for many years. We are going in the right direction, seems like. So that is very exciting. Uh, if folks want to reach out to you about this uh, or uh, start contributing or give you feedback, uh, what would be the best way for them to reach out? Oh, sorry, I should have marked this as a question. So question for you, Ben. What is the best way for people to reach out to you for any feedback or uh, anything that they want to talk about on this topic? Um, you know, you can find me in the Cubescape uh, channel in in uh, in CNCF, or you can you know private message me on. I think the the, the Slack is the best way to contact me. Um, All right, cool. Uh, and is there a GitHub issue or some other place where we can give feedback? Uh, uh, more publicly. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm I'm uh, I'm attaching now here the GitHub issue, the original, which was closed because we delivered. But I, I, it's a good place to to start to discuss. Let me put it in the chat. I will upload it here. Oh, looks like we have one more hand up. Uh, so we'll go to you, Eddie, That's after me. this. Yeah. Um, so question, uh, this is, this is stream of thought. So forgive me. Um, things such as this, things such as, uh, VEX are currently being recommended through the CLO monitor, the CLO monitor. Um, and there, so this isn't a question for, for, for Ben and group, but this is, for the for everybody else uh spawned by this discussion um is there interest and we would need to discuss this on a on a the next call um and have a more formal conversation around it but is there interest in exploring the idea of having tag security uh i don't know, like a sub a subgroup a working group that's dedicated to um working with Clo Monitor on what the hygiene recommendations are because right now there's not a there's not a like a committee there's not a pro, not a formal process um it's just a matter like right now it's just a matter of reading through tag security docs and recommendations and then translating that into Clo Monitor uh, and it's very ad hoc so I'm wondering is this a conversation we should have formally around the 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 idea of making a, a specialized group that just focuses on defining the hygiene standards? 
so great question eddie uh i have some thoughts but want to pause bef- and give others to uh give opportunity to others to respond even a plus one uh, or a thumbs up thumbs down in the comment is fine as well I see a few thumbs uh, ups. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I think it's a really interesting idea. Um, and I, I definitely like transparency around the, the recommendations when things get added or, or not. Um, I think it, it will be interesting eventually to see a reaction or, or potential pushback from like we've, and I, I don't know whatever reason this is with inside of CNCF, it, like, it sometimes is hard, uh, and I think Security Slam has really facilitated a, a significant improvements for a lot of projects. But a lot of projects, it's hard to get there. And in the more work we put into Clo Monitor to like raise the bar, I think it's more likely we'll get pushback from people. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do it because of that. I'm just saying that it's like there probably would be some drag on the process because of that. And, and I think it would just need as many people to help improve Clo Monitor as we need people to help projects improve their security po- posture. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with uh, John and Eddie. I think this is a great idea. With all things open source, let's open an issue. Uh, put this uh, in as a proposal on tax security repo. And uh, let's have that discussion in public with everyone. And then we can go from there. All right, we'll do. Thanks, guys. All right, cool. We got five minutes more. Any other topics or discussions or more questions for Ben? All right, cool. If not, thank you so much, Ben. This was really great, um, amazing work uh, and uh, demo. And I think 99% times worked, so that was also great. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I will try to put the recording as soon as possible on this because I know uh, this might be useful uh, for you as well later. Uh, So I'll send you a link later uh, on Slack after that uh, once it's up. But thank you everyone for attending, asking very insightful questions and being yourself. So see you in one week's time. And until then, stay safe. Thank you again. See you.